This is a 1957 Fender Stratocaster. That's a 1958 Fender Stratocaster. This is a 1959 Fender Stratocaster. And I'm playing them all, because they're all here. Very, very happy day. Let's start with this bad boy. 1957, a two-tone sunburst. This is one of the best maple neck strats I've ever played. You're gonna hear that, you're gonna hear a lot of superlatives in this video, because these are a handful of the best strats I've ever played in my life. Uh, yeah, this 57 is incredible. All original, three-way switch, original pickups, original everything. It's been refretted, which is awesome, because it plays like a brand new custom shop guitar. It's got a replaced nut, but the original nut is in the case. Um, people like that stuff. I don't know what you're gonna do with an old nut, but it's there if you want it. Uh, but yeah, this is just an absolutely badass 57 maple board. You know, mid 50 strats, they just are a little bit bitier. You know, this is like the all maple neck. I think they're brighter, a little more aggressive sounding, especially in the bridge. Original finish, two tone, you can see no red anywhere, just a beautiful kind of brownish yellow in the middle. Fades out, a little bit of chocolate into the dark, dark brown edges. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, look at this guitar, this is ridiculous. Um, the neck is the quintessential 57V. I mean, if you ever played like an Eric Clapton reissue, you know, signature strat, that type of thing. His neck has very similar to this. And it's got um, a pretty pronounced V down by the first fret. And then as you go down the neck, it slowly starts to taper itself out. And by the time you get down to the 12th fret, it's more of a kind of like a quintessential like oval C. But it keeps that V kind of soft all the way up until you get up into the heel area. That's it, this is just an exceptional, exceptional example of one of the quintessential, you know, electric guitars that exist, 57 Strat. Um, for me, it's the maple neck Strat. There are earlier ones, you know, 54, has big fat baseball bat neck, a little bit slightly different look to it. 58, you know, you get kind of a mixture of features where it's got a little bit less of the pronounced V um, and a three-tone burst, but for me, the 57, V-neck, the two-tone burst, the single ply guard. This is, for me, this is the 50 Strat, and this is one of the best ones that you'll play. So, uh, all that pontificating aside, I've got a 58 right here, so we'll go over that one too. Let's see what the differences are. All right, first thing you'll notice is the color. Um, 58, you introduced the three-tone sunburst, as you can see, you got the red in between. Um, and it hasn't really faded on this one. It's a really apparent, nice, lush, three-tone, still single ply guard. This one um, still has a little bit of the V up by the first fret, but it tapers out into like a, some more traditional kind of a chunky C pretty quickly around the fifth, fifth to seventh fret area, and then it kind of stays that way all the way down. So it's a nice kind of transition between the hard V of like the 56, 57, and then the more rounded shapes that would come after. Um, this one is just like bone stock. Original frets, everything. Um, original frets, they are low original frets. It plays, it sounds incredible. Would it benefit from a refret? Sure, am I gonna do that? Absolutely not, that's the next owner's responsibility. But uh, incredibly light, super, super loud, super resonant unplugged. Um, plugged in tonally, it's really kind of spot on with the 57. They're kind of like twins, but one has, you know, 
frosted tips, and the other one just has its normal hair, right? Um, no, they're, they're pretty much twins, tonally. Um, it's just the 57 has new frets, so it's a little bit more fun to play, so that's the one that we plugged in, but the 58 sounds pretty much identical. But yeah, other than the color, and there's some awesome buckle rash in the back here, very, very similar guitar. Again, they sound very similar, necks a little bit different, but these are two peas in the pod. Uh, that brings us to the 59, which is a completely different beast. The 59, and this is a later 59, so it's got, you know, it could be a 60. It's not, it's a 59 by all the, all the parts. We checked everything, the neck date, the stamp, everything. It's a 59, it's late 59, but pretty much the same spec as a 60. Um, early 59s would look just like this. They switched to a slab rosewood board. Um, during that year, and uh, this is a great example. So the slab board, you can see, it's got a big thick chunk of rosewood. This one has been refretted. Um, it's awesome, it's awesome. Again, just like the 57, it plays like a brand new custom shop guitar. Um, but yeah, so what makes this 59 slash 60? Cool. Um, obviously the rosewood board, clay dot inlays. The rosewood board, the slab board, it's just a warmer, sound than the maple and so i've always found the early 60s strats and i'm just going to keep saying that even though it's a 59 because it's just kind of more in line with the 60 61 type spec they're just warmer sounding real you know when people talk about like a buttery sounding strat neck pickup it's this that's what this does um stevie ray vaughn you know john mayer loves the 63 64 warm buttery not quite as aggressive not quite as snarly as the 50s to my ear at least um like neck pickup on this, like it does Hendrix really well, obviously. But the bridge pickup is awesome too. And unlike a lot of vintage strats, we just got really lucky here, all three. Um, the output is matched really, really well. A lot of times the bridge pickups are thin, weak, a little ice picky. You ever hear that term? Um, strat bridge pickup would be usually what they're referring to, vintage strat pickup. These actually sound full and they rip. And this one especially, it's like, kind of the spiky frequencies have been rounded off a little bit. So everything comes out of this a little bit warmer, a little fuller. You don't get a big, huge dip when you go from the neck to the bridge. Um, this one is, uh, had a couple things done to it. Um, then again, improvements, but worth noting. Uh, refret, great refret, new nut. And then it had a five-way switch installed, so you can get your uh, Mark Knopfler tones in there, if that's your thing. Other than that, all original and just an exceptional playing and sounding and looking instrument. Look at this. So this is a three-tone burst technically, but the lacquer that they were using or something about it, just the red faded a lot on these 59s, early 60s. So it looks like a two-tone. It was a three-tone. It's just the third tone is basically gone, which is awesome. I love it. It's kind of like a best of both worlds. Um, really like a really chocolatey chocolatey colors in here. It doesn't get like full black, kind of gets dark brown. There's a little bit of the red in there, but yeah, just love the way this is worn in. All honest wear, um, no relicking or anything like that. Um, oh, the neck profile. That's a very big difference between these two, the 57, 58, and this one. Uh, 59, 60 is about as slim as you'll ever find on a Strat. This one is about 0.76 inches at the first. It's pretty slim, you can see. Um, it's got a big taper. It fattens up big time by the time it gets to the 12th fret, but it does start off pretty thin. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm playing all these and comfortably getting around on all of them, but it is, you know, it's a slim neck strat. If you want like a beefier, beefier neck profile, but the same type of sound, like the warmer, more buttery 60 sound, 63, 64 strat is kind of what you want. A little bit beefier neck on those, more of a rounded, rounded C closer to like the earlier 50s stuff. But I love the 5960, it's really slim. I have a 72 Les Paul that's like paper thin at the nut and I'm just used to it, so it doesn't bother me. But um, with, with like the more modern frets, it doesn't feel as slim as it is. It plays a little thicker, but um, yeah, just exceptional and very different. And uh, it's cool we have them all here because you don't get to actually just kind of play year by year and see, feel, and hear the differences of uh, these incredible vintage instruments very often, at least in the same room, plugged into the same amp with the same stuff. I've got all these things running through this incredible Magnetone Twilighter. The Magnetone just lets whatever you're plugging into it shine and be its truest voice. 
And my God, when the voices are so beautiful, you really appreciate it with an amp like this. Um, I'm also running, uh, just to get that really cool, you know, like early Pink Floyd vibe, uh, the Jam Pedals Harmonious Monk, which is a uh, harmonic tremolo pedal. Uh, sounds incredible. Um, not too dissimilar to the tremolo that would actually come in this amplifier. Um, I just wanted to use the pedal because you could dial it in a little bit more um, exact to kind of like the, the Pink Floyd tones that I wanted to get. So just an incredible sounding pedal and the best strats you'll ever play in your life plugged into an absolutely incredible tube amplifier with some spring reverb. So if you are local, please come hang out, play these things. They are here hanging in the shop. I'm more than happy to plug you into a beautiful amplifier and let you have a go at it. They're just ridiculous and they deserve to be played. Um, until next time. Thank <laughs> you.